teaching Tozer is always a blessing in the sense that he's not somewhat unfamiliar with us. He was around during the 20th century. Matter of fact, you know, I don't have it with me off the top of my head. But he lived in our generation, so to speak, and he ministered to ministers. He was a, by his own admission, a prophet. And it's funny because most people that would normally criticize people that claim that title don't say a word about Tozer. <laughs> They're like, okay, you know, <laughs> zip of the lippa. <laughs> so I kind of think maybe, you know, they kind of understood Tozer. And I enjoy a lot of his teaching. You know, I've never met the man. I never heard his audios. I don't want to. I read enough of his material that I enjoy it. And so we use that as our foundation for a lot of discipleship and teaching because it's a benefit not only for you, but for me, it gives me a chance to reinforce those things that I learned and I've been learning in my life by the applicable means of hearing myself teach as well as listening to the Holy Spirit in me, teaching others as he's instructing me in the way that I should go. Because all I'm really doing is just relating to you that with which God has given me, for me, and then if it happens to fit for your life, then you get to apply that to your life as the Holy Spirit leads you. And it's interesting that we're talking about that because that is what Tozer is talking about today, is that really, a lot of times people get this confusion part mixed up. You know, they think, well, how come a person could be so wonderful in the pulpit and such a weenie or whatever they are? <laughs> Maybe they're a hamburger, not a weenie. You know, a hot dog, and sometimes they're a hot dog in the pulpit and they're a hamburger, you know, in life. Or maybe they're a hamburger in the pulpit and a hot dog in real life. But the point being is, how could they be so different? Well, the point is, is when the person is teaching, then the Holy Spirit is applying that Word of God. Sometimes the Holy Spirit is working in the teacher to arrange the way that he presents the information as well as to properly convey it to the people that are responding. And then he also, in his way of being the Holy Spirit, causes the people to hear that which they need according to their peculiar circumstances and situation in life as God has arranged their life to be for that moment that the word goes out from the pastor, teacher, preacher, minister, or whoever, maybe priest, that rabbi, that may be communicating by way of being filled with the Holy Spirit, that with which God has given them to teach. And so a lot of times there's an unfair or unrealistic expectation about people on that person. The person is just flesh and blood. I mean, I know that because I never treated pastors as anybody special. And when I got working with them, I realized I wasn't so far off the beam. <laughs> just like everybody else, you know, they got their good days, they got their bad days, they got their ups, they got their downs. Yeah, you know, we don't we don't elevate anybody in this ministry. You know, we're like, hey, you know what? All of sin and fall short of the glory of God. And give me five minutes with you and I can name your sin. <laughs> I'll name that sin in five minutes. <laughs> name that sin. <laughs> well, you know, I mean, we used to enjoy that. But I know a lot of, you know, unfortunately, people that get into ministry, sometimes they're so insecure that they can't laugh about it and admit who they are because people react to it. They want their pastors to be more than what they really are. And really all they are is just an empty vessel. I mean, the less of you that's in it, the better God can use it. Because if you are full of yourself, hey, God can't use you, but you'll still be out there preaching. <laughs> and God help you for whatever message you think you're communicating, because it may be more religious than relationship. So I kind of like that, because I get to empty myself of myself in order for God to move himself into me and take over through my mouth what it is that he would want to communicate. And I do it all the time because, I'll be honest with you, before I walk out here and sit down or before I start sharing Jesus or talking about him in some particular way, I'm whipped. <laughs> I'm like sitting there at the computer going, oh man, what a day. I'm dragging. I don't know what I'm going to do next. What do I do next? I don't know. Then you can do this. Lord, what do you want me to do? You don't know? Okay, I don't know. Yeah. I'm just kind of, uh, you know stumbling, bumbling, fumbling around, and then suddenly God says, 
My God. Who, who? Who? Michael. Who? Oh. Go record. Who? Uh, okay. We're in that thing. He thinks it's going to record. Then I come out here and it's like, bing! <laughs> Whoosh! Splish! Splash! We're taking a bath. <laughs> you put your right foot in and guess what? God goes everywhere else and then we put you in. But not really. I mean, I come alive by way of the spirit who is within me causing that word to go forth that it kind of just blows through and allows me to get a little bit of energy from it, you know, but for the most part just kind of like, I'm kicking back, kind of going, huh? Oh, I get it. You know, and I'm learning at the same time that you are. I kind of appreciate that because I know that Frankly, you know, that means that nobody really is greater or lesser, that we all have the same capacity to be able to be filled according to that measure of faith that we've been given and also according to that emptiness of our vessel that we've taken our, put it bluntly, junk out, you know, because if you get rid of the junk, you know, kind of getting it out of your system, then God can put something good in there, you know. But if you're filled full of junk, you need to flush it. <laughs> You know, and go take care of it. Take care of that mess, you know. And if you're bound up and wound up, you need to unwind and de <laughs> Bound up, wound up, de-wound, de-wind. So you need to kind of get it cleaned up, and get it straightened out, and get right. And that's kind of what I enjoy about that, because that means that God gets the glory, and you don't, and I don't. So, in Tozer today, he kind of brings that home in saying that the new man in Christ is a perpetual miracle. I got no sunlight, so I got to be careful here. I can't see. There we go. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. The man of God, the true Spirit-filled man of God, is a perpetual miracle. He has come to his knowledge of God by the wonder of the new birth and the illumination of the Spirit. Therefore, his life is completely different from the world around him. Man, ain't that the truth. <laughs> I am not like the world around me. Guess what I do all day? That don't make no sense. <laughs> Consider with me the words of 1 John 2.27. But the anointing which you have received of him abideth in you, and you need not that any man teach you, but as the same anointing teaches you all things, and is truth, and is no lie, and even as it hath taught you, you shall abide in him. John was a teacher and he says that your knowledge of God is not taught you from without, it is received by an inner, an inner anointing. In other words, it's received by the inner part of what we say that when God comes in you. See, God, a lot of times people use all these words, you know, and they kind of like mess you up, don't they? I mean, doesn't it get a little confusing when people say, well, accept Jesus and he'll come into your life. Well. He will come into your life, I mean, but he'll walk physically into your life. That that he will do, you know. He'll physically intervene in your life and emotionally intervene into it and spiritually. But what part that comes inside you, that is Jesus, is the Spirit of God. You see, the Spirit of God, when you ask God into your life, comes in you to cause there to be this kind of like kernel, so to speak, this little seed, kind of like this baby spirit that just goes, all of a sudden from nowhere goes, and there's light. It's light springing forth in the midst of darkness. It's a fulfillment of the prophecy that says, in the midst of darkness, the light has sprung forth. Now that light is Jesus. We know that. We know that's the fulfillment of the prophecy of the Messiah. But what usually isn't applied is the personal part of that. The part where not only does it apply to the world, it applies to the person. And people forget that part, that that light that's brought forth is Jesus, but it's the Spirit of God that's in us. That Spirit of God that's light in us. That He is the light. You know, Jesus is light because we know that the Father, the Son, and the Spirit make up the Godhead. That if you are looking at the Spirit inside you, you are seeing Jesus because He's pointing to Jesus. And He can only reveal Jesus because He's not going to reveal Himself. Sorry, doesn't work that way. So you see, inside that part that really you can't see, where's the Spirit? Father. Is it in my fingers? Is it in my toes? Is it in my nose? Who knows? The spirit knows. No, but you know, the... What is it? The phantom knows? The phantom knows. The spirit. The phantom. We got it. Hey. 
da, 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 da. But the reality of it all is that it is the Spirit of God. He is the one in you. Jesus is in heaven, seated at the right hand of the Father. They are connected in a way that we don't understand the dimensionality of the Godhead of the Spirit of just something that is way out, out that way, and our brain is only this way, so we're kind of like, it goes beyond my understanding? Uh-huh. Especially when you talk about the Spirit of God. There is not a big, comprehensive, you know, good book on teaching you about the Spirit of God. There's a lot of things about the person of the Holy Spirit and all these things that they talk about, but when it comes to like the stuff that they don't talk about, man, I'm telling you, <laughs> there's a lot more we don't know than we do know, and there's a lot more that hasn't been identified and defined, and I'm telling you, there's a reality check there that goes, hey, you know what, just because, you know, Gentiles, pardon me, didn't want to get into it, but mystics did, and Catholics did, and Jews did, there's something out there, you know, when it comes to the Spirit of God, but we're not going to go there because we only know what we're told. So whatever's gone from this part of understanding to that part that we can't understand, I ain't going there. <laughs> when God wants us to know, we will be taught into that spiritual realm where God will expand our knowledge with a spiritual understanding and a reality that will expand our current limited physical comprehension which is limited by the physical domain that we live in and exist within that sphere of what we call the brain that has neurons and electrons that are connecting you know, according to a chemical balance. Soon it will be a chemical reaction. It will be a spiritual interaction. It will be soul on this side, which is a, a like an electron, a neuron, and you know, there'll be neurons over here, electrodes, whatever you want to call it, something I forget what they're called, but they're kind of like this, you know, and then there's a spark just back and forth, and that's what actually creates thought, and makes electrical, magnetic, whatever, in fact, in your brain, and that's what people say thought is. No, what's going to happen is that the soul and the spirit are going to do that, because they actually are happening behind the scenes that you can't see, you can only see the physical part. So when it does happen that way, ooh, wow, we'll have so much more comprehension. Even now, our physical capacity says we're only using, like, what, 10% of our brain, or less, or more, something right around there. So, it's kind of neat to know that there's more. More? Yeah. So, knowing that there's more to this spirit inside of us, the spirit of God, and knowing that there's more to Jesus than meets the eye, which obviously when he was transfigured, it was like, wow. But then, knowing that there's more, like in heaven when John went there and said, ah, I can't get a handle on this, then, you should know that, guess what? There's more. <laughs> more than you would even dream of. This is nothing. We're just on baby stuff. Jesus said, man, you know, John witnessed what he knew. I witnessed what I know. And you don't even grasp that. So how can I even begin to speak of the things that are going on in heaven? Well, that's where I kind of went. You know, Lord, uh, I want to get over this, you know, like baby knowledge stuff. And let's get on to some good stuff, <laughs> you know. And so kind of, you know. I've been spoiled in some ways, you know. But we'll all get there. We're all on the same even playing field because it's only the Spirit of God in you that causes you both to know and to do of His good will and to understand the Scriptures as they apply and to cause you to remember what's all the things that Jesus has taught you. So really, when you think that you got to go out and memorize, you know, all these things, you know, like sit down and rope, rope, remember, 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 remember this, remember that. It's nice. It's intellectually stimulating. It can cause your brain to kind of like, you know, work in a better way because it's going to fire off those little, you know, neurons or electrons, whatever they are, in the brain, you know, kind of synopsis. There we go. Brain synopsis, you know, going, shh, 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 shh. you know, and you're going to look like, yeah, I'm trying, I'm dying, no, I'm living, I'm living. <laughs> but I say God will give you the words you need to speak at the time that you need to speak them. So it's kind of like just read it, you know, and let it go in and sink in, you know, God will start taking care of the rest of the parts of it, even as you keep reading it, because it will apply whatever you're reading that day to your life. But John was a teacher and he says that your knowledge of God is not taught you from without, but is received by that inner anointing, by the inner anointing of the Holy Spirit of God as he lives in you and breathes and has your being. What are we going to do with this truth? Are we going to open the door of our personality and fling it wide and say, dig it, give me more? <laughs> I did. <laughs> Man, I'm a glutton. <laughs> I'm spoiled. <laughs> I wanted more. Let us not be afraid of the Holy Spirit. He is an illuminator. He reveals things. He shows things. He uh, is also going to show you things you might not know. That it's like, I am disgusting. Look in there. Woo, pew. 
Maybe I am disgusting after all, in the flesh. <laughs> but in the spirit, man, we're cleaning house. He will show us more of God in a moment than we can learn in a lifetime without Him. He will not throw out what we have learned if it is true. He will set it on fire, that's all. He will add fire to the altar. In other words, that with which you think you understand based upon a religious experience of your accumulated knowledge, he's the one who actually brings wisdom into the picture because that is his nature. He is the spirit of wisdom. And because that comes from him, whenever you have any wisdom at all, it is part of the nature of God. The same way that love, if you have any kind of capacity to love at all, and when you think you love somebody, that's really God's nature in you that is giving you the ability to love. You can like, I mean, that's fine. You know, you can like things, you know, and you can lust things, and you can do all the kind of stupid things that, you know, creation does, you know, in its own way, created as a being that it is. But that part that can love, the capacities that go beyond the created effect, all are of the nature of God. That's God in you, doing what he does and able to communicate it through that manifestation of those certain types of fruits of the Spirit that are only at work within you when you are a Christian or as it is in a defuncted way. In other words, kind of like a, a tree with no fruit. When it's still kind of like a tree, then it has kind of like a partial love. Kind of like the love that they talk about with the Sturgio Paleo arrows. Uh, I can't even think of the other ones. Um, camaraderie, I can't think of the other one, but anyways, but they're the kind of like, you know, superficial loves, not the real love that we're talking about. So the same thing is true about that when it comes to that aspect of wisdom, because wisdom and knowledge comes by the Holy Spirit. And so taking knowledge to make it applicable of the knowledge of God, which is what knowledge is, because knowledge isn't the kenosis of the world, but it's knowledge that comes from God, which is of the spiritual nature, then the reality of that would come from the Spirit of God as He is in you, giving you wisdom to be able to know with the knowledge of that being we are giving our fealty to, which we call God, is because God, as we are being led by the Spirit of God, is also the Son and the Father, so He makes that aware to us by way of faith, not faith in, but faith of, so that we would not be manifesting something that we think that we've grown, but that He would have demonstrated in us that it's just a complete acceptance of what God is saying. It's pretty simple once you kind of let it go. Fling it wide and you'll hear it like I just said it. <laughs> Woohoo! <laughs> We're off on the tangent. Oh, but really, I mean, it's that simple. I mean, to me, it's like, not that complicated, but I know that all sounded pretty, probably like, probably like, and flew the coop. Because if you're not on a daily basis kind of like thinking, talking, relating to these realities that we are going to live in, then I'm sure that for the first time you may have heard some of what I just said for the first time. What a bummer. But okay, <laughs> do what uh, Tozer just said. Hey, fling open. Fling out there your personality. He'll set it on fire. Whatever is good will be consumed by that fire of God, which is going to burn it up. You know, but don't be on fire. You know, I mean, that's not kind of, you know, it's, being on fire is kind of like, you know, being excitable and be careful. Because sometimes people that are on fire get burned. And that's all I can tell you is this kind of, passion is good, but direction is better. The blessed Holy Spirit waits to be honored. He will honor Christ as we honor he will honor Jesus as we honor Jesus. He waits, and if we will throw open our hearts to Him, a new sun will rise on us. I know this by personal experience in my own life and ministry. It is a reality, not so much of trying to get into like, Oh, the gifts of the Spirit. Oh, I had a word from God. Oh, I had a vision. Oh, I had a dream. Oh, I had this. Oh, I had that. No. I got more than all of you. <laughs> At least all of those that are like, trying to claim name and fame, you know, make famous by their own. And this is just a ministry that God's given me, so I'm not going to, you know, get too far into it. So don't think that I'm thinking I'm somebody special. I'm not. I'm just somebody that lets the Holy Spirit tell me what to say to the person that really has gotten, like, off the wall. You know, you know, like, really not pointing to Jesus with what they call the Holy Spirit. Everything whether it's a gift, whether it's a manifestation, whether it's a power, an ability, a coordinated ministry of the 
Spirit of God, the seven spirits of God that are before the throne, the Spirit of God Himself as He reveals Himself, it's all about Himself, Jesus. Because if you're getting anything off immediately in the realm of the Spirit, it will be right there about Him. Because that's where you will be going off tangent and you'll start talking about the presence of God as opposed to the Son of God. You'll be talking about the Spirit doing this, that, and the other thing instead of the Spirit pointing to Jesus. You'll be talking about all these gifts instead of using them for the glory of God the Father and to the glory of His Son in honor and glory and wisdom and might for the things that He has done. So you see, there is a differentiation between that Spirit that goes off on a tangent and the Spirit that is true and life that reveals Jesus. It's a left and right thing when it comes to this spirit thing because that's when people, when they start getting into spiritism and spiritualism and into the Pentecostalisms that have gone off. I don't mean the Pentecostal part that's, you know, okay. You know, it's like, there's a lot of good Pentecostals out there, trust me. You know, I'm not a Pentecostal, though some conservatives might think so. I'm really not. To me, it's just like, you're dealing with the spirit, so it's like no big deal. And it's like you can start talking in tongues, you know, and it's like, okay, fine, we're talking in tongues now. What are we going to do? Are we going to interpret it, or are we just going to sit here and talk in tongues and just make each other feel better? To me, it's like that bland. You know, it's like, that's fine. That's not the best there is, though. Guess what? If I really want to blow your mind, let's go to heaven and go talk to God. You ready? Let's go. Let's get out of here. <laughs> now, that would blow some of your minds. Okay. Or, you know, I'll say, hey, you know what? Jesus wants to talk, so you want to invite him over? Look, he's sitting over there. Let me have you see him like I see him at times when he's working in my life. So now, Lord, you reveal to him that you're here so that he can see you too, just like you did with Elijah and Elijah, so that he can have his mind blown, so that he can quit getting focused on the Spirit of God stuff and let the Spirit reveal you what you want us to do. You don't think that blows people's minds. You want to talk to some of the people I've had to do that with. <laughs> it's like, dude, get it right, please. I don't want to do this. I look like an idiot. But it's fun. I mean, that's the whole point of what Tozer's trying to say about get out of yourself. Get out of your mindset. Get out of your frame of reference. Let God be God. John had it all down, pretty much. He thought he was pretty, you know, set. You know, he he pretty much lived with Jesus, talked with Jesus, was hanging out on Jesus' right hand. He'd done his mistakes. He'd done his good things. You know, he'd been in the ministry. He pretty much finished up his life, and there he was sitting on Patmos, not ready to have his mind blown wide open. And let me tell you, if you don't think John had his mind blown, you need to reread Revelation. <laughs> That man dropped dead, so to speak. <laughs> Bam! <laughs> you know, he knew that this was way out there. And it wasn't like insanity, but boy, was it a different reality. And that's what God is trying to say in Tozer, you know, to you. God is the one who is at work teaching you by way of His Holy Spirit. If you're ready for it and you want to, you know, ask Him to lead you in certain areas and, whoo, you know, enjoy it. But it's the Holy Spirit teaching you and allowing you to know wisdom and knowledge so that you could point to Jesus because Jesus did things likewise that kind of blew the disciples' minds. I think it was called the Mount of Transfiguration and I don't think it was just he went up and started shining and going, shine Jesus shine, let the world see why are you go. No, he was like <laughs> suddenly wow, like they say transfigured. That's bigger than Crucified. <laughs> he was like, wow. Not just glorified, but full of all this stuff. And that would have, like, had it not been for the grace of God, eliminated those cells that those poor men were sitting there in and sin. You know, their cells would have come flying apart being in that kind of presence. So, you know, kind of understand that there's more to our life than... But you see, touch, feel, you know, and kind of think that, you know, bikes are pretty cool or that, you know, making pictures of Jesus looks really neat. <laughs> As if that were Jesus, you know. Okay, you know, it's an actor. But the point is, is that it causes us to think about Jesus in a positive way and to look forward to the day when we will see him face to face with his permanent scars. But recognize also that 
if you can receive it, the Spirit of God wants to take you to a place in Tozer teaching, understanding that let go of whatever your boundaries are in some ways and recognize that God will take you to the scriptures to make sure that it's accurate. But let the Spirit of God teach you as He wants to lead you into knowing Jesus more intimate and personal than you've ever known Him before. And that that is a experiential knowledge, but it's according to the Word of God, not according to the off teachings or out of sight reachings or some kind of imaginations or some kind of declinations where people think they went to hell. I can't find a scripture in heaven or hell that tells me that you know somebody went to hell for any amount of time. God bless them. I'm not gonna you know tell them they're wrong in their understanding of what they say they've done. I'm not going to challenge them because it's not my position to do that. What is my position, what is my relationship with God is to say, God bless you. I'm not putting my trust in that, but I'm putting my trust in the Lord that I will follow Him. And if God wants me to use that for some reason, He'll let me know. But so far, He hasn't. And a person that tells me they've been to hell, well, if that caused them to go to Jesus even closer, praise the Lord. I'm not going to support that. You know, I'm not going to post it. I'm not going to promote it. I'm not going to say that it can be done. I'm just not going to participate in it because God is their master, so to speak. Jesus is their Lord. As he leads them, I'll let him take care of that. But for me, hey, tripping out, you know, on the rest of it, whatever's in scripture, like Paul, you know, tripping to heaven and stuff, that I'll go for. You know, that I believe in and that I do and that I am more than willing to acknowledge that the Holy Spirit will Possibly, if it's important for you to know or experience it, then he'll show you things that you never dreamed of. I has not seen nor ear heard, neither has been in the heart of man, the things which God has prepared for them, as well as willing to reveal to them even himself. For Jesus said it himself, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man open the hear my voice. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man open the door, I will come into him and sup with him, and he with me. And he would open the, you know, basically you open the door. You know, you, hey, you, know, you hear a knock, open the door. You know, check it out. If it turns out to be somebody that you don't recognize, invite him in. Give him dinner. Jesus might reveal himself right there in the midst, like he did with the two on the way to Emmaus, when they didn't even recognize him, and then suddenly he like, oh, it was Jesus. Wow, we didn't even know it. See, sometimes Jesus comes disguised. So don't be surprised if God still has some things to blow your mind with.